Praise the Lord. Once again, I'm back, and I continue talking about my friend, and my friend is called the Holy Spirit. But let's commit this program to the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So my friend is a friend indeed, and he has his will. He has what he wants to, to do. He has um, a mission to accomplish. He is there to prepare vessels for God. And God wants to fill those vessels with himself, with his presence. In Luke chapter 1, verse 15, John the Baptist feel, it was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was a vessel, a forerunner for Jesus Christ. So that particular scripture says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall, shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. We see in the scriptures when Mary was promised to give, a, to give birth to a child to be named Emmanuel, the Christ. She visited Elizabeth, her cousin. Her cousin. And, the, and the word says that, that the child in the, in the womb of Elizabeth leapt and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this scripture is saying that is, that was to be born, called John, was to be a great man, and he would be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now, when God chooses vessels, very fast, the issue of the Holy Spirit comes in. God cannot choose a vessel and deprive him, that vessel, the Holy Spirit. And even the involvement in the whole process, the Holy Spirit is the one that is really here for us, is really implementing what needs to be done as far as God is concerned. So in the case of John, we see that John, being a forerunner for Jesus Christ, had to be filled with the Holy Spirit in the mother's womb. And even if you think about the case of Jesus himself, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus himself was filled. The word says there, Luke 4, verse 1, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the, the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Jesus himself was filled with the Holy Spirit even when he went to the wilderness to be tested. And he was tested on ordinary issues that we also get tempted in. The issue of food, the bread. He was tested there. He was fasting for days, eating nothing. So the devil came and tested him, making him, uh, telling him to make stones to be bread for him to eat because he was hungry. He was tested in the area of worship to worship the devil in exchange of kingdoms of the world, the glory of the world, and the authority that is seen in the world. He was tempted in that area. And I want to say that these are the same areas where we are also tested. One time, I had a senior position where I was working. And I guess there were agendas, there were things that needed to be done, maybe not so straight. And as I was given the position, someone was sent to me to get my ID so that I could be, get, as I, I could be given land. I, since when did we become so, uh, such friends so that I can be given land? I rejected the land. 
in a, in a, in a tea growing zone. This friend of mine, the Holy Spirit, helps me. I had the position to be given that land. But I did not trust it. It was intended to soften my heart so that I can receive instructions on every side and not take a stand. Since when did you, uh, did you hear people being given land and they reject? In a tea growing zone. I want to say that this friend of mine is a friend indeed. He knows what is coming ahead of you. He knows why things happen in the way they happen around you. You only see what is visible now. You have no idea of what tomorrow holds for you. But my friend knows. The Holy Spirit knows. And he tells me to do what is impossible for many people. To reject a gift. To reject a gift. In another occasion, somebody came to my office. And he was a casual friend. He was not really a good, uh, such a friend. We only happened to be doing things together in the, in, uh, things to do with the work. <clears throat> and he came at a time when I did not even have money for lunch. So I was sitting in the office. So we talked general things, many general things. And when it was time for him to go, he went into his pocket, pulled an envelope, and he handed the envelope to me and said, this is yours, and he turned away and left. When I opened the envelope, inside there was 100,000 shillings inside. 100,000 Kia shillings inside. And that time, I was sitting in the office because I did not have 500 shillings for lunch. This friend of mine, the Holy Spirit, showed me that this is a snare. I had no idea what it was about, but I knew one thing. By the help of the Holy Spirit, People don't give 100,000 shillings just like that without a reason. And this reason which he did not explain when we sat with him for so long, it must be confidential. And I don't like secret things. I don't like confidential things. I want things that are explained. I want things that I can understand where you are going. So, what I did with that money, <clears throat> I held it, put it back in the envelope, put it back in the drawer, the desk drawer. For two weeks, he didn't come back. And remember, he did not say anything, what it was about and what he wanted. But I knew, by the help of the Holy Spirit, that this man was about, was about something. So when he came back, before he sat, before we reached on each other to greet each other, I, I, I opened the drawer, I took the envelope. Instead of greeting him, I gave him the envelope. I told him, I don't want it. He never said one word. He understood where, where, where I was coming from. What am I saying here? God is not going to use vessels that are defiled, Vessels that cannot even listen to the guidance. God is going to use vessels that will die to themselves so that God may rise in them. God is going to use vessels that sacrifice, that forsake the riches of this world for the sake of the things of the kingdom, real life. God is looking for vessels that he can use, not vessels that are swayed on every side with every leaf, small gift, every small giving, not vessels that are dying for the things of the world. 
The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you don't have the teacher, if you don't have the guide, if you don't have someone to help you to remain on course, for sure, the world will mess you up. And God will be in tears. For how long is God going to be in tears? In this season, God is looking for vessels. He wants to give us a revival. He wants to revive us. He wants to revive this nation, the nation of Kenya. He wants to revive the church. He wants to pour his spirit the way he said in Joel 2.28. Pouring his spirit. There are many people waiting. Even God's creation is in pain, in agony, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. God wants to raise sons, not bastards. So I want to encourage you. Again, I say it in the other program, it doesn't matter where you are. <clears throat> it really doesn't matter. What matters is your heart, the condition of your heart. There's a reason why you are here. Many people, as I counsel with people, they say, Pastor, I, don't know, I do not even know my father at the age of 50. I don't know my father. So they are aching because maybe they were raised up by single mothers. They have never known their fathers. So uh, I expect that they, they, they do ache. And indeed, they do ache. And that aching messes you up. It messes you up because you are emotional, because there's something that you have never known, you are bothered, you are bothered until everything becomes, you are manifesting issues around your life because of the heart being in a mess. But I tell them, nobody comes here on earth without a tick from our Father in heaven. There is a reason why you are here. I don't care how you came, but you are here. And he knows why you are here. And he has an agenda for you. Here on earth. I tell them. Supposing your mother tells you, keep nagging her. Supposing she tells you that she was forced by her brother. That's how you came. How will you deal with that? Stop it. Stop it. If really something bothers you, why don't you go to your heavenly father and ask him? And first of all, ask him why you are here in the first place. Because he has a reason. Nobody comes here without God willing. So, you could be a vessel, but you are a messy vessel. A, me a vessel for something. Maybe you, you are here because God sent you here so that you can facilitate the revival in this nation. And you are there messing yourself, asking yourself too many questions. Why don't you ask God, Lord, why am I here? And you discover that God has a big agenda with you or for you. So God needs vessels to fill those vessels with himself. And that means to, to fill those vessels with his own spirit so that now they can perform. He found Jesus. Jesus was filled. He found John the Baptist. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. So we are saying, even you and me for that matter, if we start shaping up, giving God the opportunity to do what he wants to do by his Holy Spirit, then you quickly discover that you'll be a different person. I don't want to go too far out of what I'm saying. But you know, even John the Baptist confessed that he did not know Jesus. But he said, he who sent me said to me, upon whom the Spirit will come and rest, stay on, that's it. And 
He will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Spirit. He didn't know him. But he had a message. He had uh, information. The person that you are, you are uh, promoting, you are a foreigner, you are talking about that person, whom you don't know. He was confessing. The person himself is the person upon whom the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will come and rest on him. Stay on, not to depart. That's him. Then, along the way, John the Baptist was saying, he, that person, the one God told me, he who sent me, talked about, must increase, and I, but I must decrease. Now, I don't know what you are saying yourself. Maybe you don't even have a relationship with God. You need that relationship. You need a relationship with God. You need salvation. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to keep talking to God by the Holy Spirit. We need that. So that it, the journey may be, may be very clear to us. The journey needs to be clear. When John the Baptist understood his mission, he reconciled himself his life, I must decrease and he must increase. I don't know whether you are saying the same, but me, I say, I want to break, melt, decrease so that Christ in me may be seen. I want to repeat what I said in another program. <clears throat> the dealings on the inside, the fruit of the spirit. I went to a hospital with an appointment with a doctor. And when I got there, I found so many people. I was wondering whether I made a mistake. But the main thing here is that all those people had come to see the same doctor. So I did not carry anything because I, came, I, I, I got there on time. I thought it's just a question of coming and because I have an appointment and then I go in and then I'm treated, I, 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 I'm examined. But I sat there with all those people for four hours, patiently, not with nothing to read. Four hours. When I got inside, the receptionist told me, I'm amazed. You have been sitting there for four hours, and you have not come complaining. Everybody else came complaining because of the delay. That is patience, which only the Holy Spirit can give you. The fruit, long-suffering, the fruit of the Spirit, it, is, it works from inside, and it is visible by sinners. It's visible by sinners. Then when I went to the doctor, there were two doctors uh, looking at me. One of them said, have you told uh, your children about uh, what's going on here? I said, no. He said, I like your faith. <laughs> I like your faith. Of course I have faith. God is my healer. I have a father. I have a comforter. I have a helper. Why do you want me to go down? I'm not going down. I refuse. <laughs> Why? I am bold. I am bold because I know who I am in Christ by the help of the Holy Spirit. So God wants vessels to fill. He wants to fill us. He wants to give us revival. He wants to revive you. He wants to heal people, uh, many people, same time. In the book of Acts, Chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, we see the brethren being filled with the Holy Spirit. It says, Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire, as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with the other tongues, as the Spirit gave, 
gave them utterance. Again, this is a scripture that we all know. We have even repeated many times. But what we are saying, that's, what the, that's the desire of the Lord. He wants to fill us. He wants to fill you. He wants, to, to, he, he wants a, a, a whole nation transformed until even the animals, even the crops are changed. They can feel the presence of God through vessels. God will always use man. From creation, he created man in his own image according to his likeness and gave authority for dominion over all his creation. So man is crucial, man is important, and you are the man, you are the woman, and God wants to use you. In Acts chapter 4, verses 11 to 12, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and addressed those who had uh, arrested him with John. And the scripture says, this is the stone, that's what he was saying, this is the stone which was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Peter and, and, uh, Peter and John, they were arrested because of they had healed, Peter had healed the man who was lame, and uh, he got hold of him by the hand and lifted him up and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, such as I have, give I thee, I give you. Arise and walk. So the man walked. So it's out of that drama that now Peter is being arrested together with John. Now he's facing a challenge here. He's being accused. And he was bold enough, filled with the Holy Spirit, the word of God is saying, filled with the Holy Spirit. He addressed them. And if you continue reading, you'll see that uh, these people, because of seeing the boldness that Peter had, and John, and they were not learned, they were untrained, they realized that they must have been with Jesus. They are confessing. But we have seen that they, they, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were bold, the way they were behaving. Though they were not learned, though they, had, they were not trained, but the things they were saying and doing, it can, they cannot be just themselves. They must have been with Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants you to be with, with Jesus. Jesus is not here physically. Jesus is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is here. If you don't embrace him, I doubt your work. I doubt your ability to face challenges. I doubt your ability to be able to do things that are miraculous. I want to give a testimony. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, one time I was sick. I had a, a neck ick, bad neck ick. I had learned a few scriptures, not uh, all the scriptures. And I knew that God is our healer. In an innocent way, I decided to wrestle with him concerning what was going on. I could not turn in bed, I could not sit, I could not sleep. It was very, very painful. The neck was aching and aching and aching. So I put my hands upon my neck. And I, tell, I told God, God, I'm not leaving you until you heal me. So I kept on nagging him. I kept on telling him, I shall not leave you until you heal me. When I insisted, God healed me. There and there. Then I made a promise with him. I told him, I will never ask you for a miracle again. Why? I believe you. I believe you 100%. So I will not sit there waiting for miracles. When I pray, I ask God to do something, 
I go, I forget it because I know he has done it. So one time we prayed with a sister who could not get children. She got one child and then she stopped. She could not get a child for many years. Immediately she became pregnant and she gave birth to a son and we rejoiced. And then someone else who had, uh, who, who, who had some condition, AIDS, HIV positive, we prayed, and the thing went completely. And many other situations. I don't know where you are today. My God is a healer. This God we are dealing with is a merciful God, is a loving God, and he wants a, a relationship, your relationship with him. Please, do not harden your heart. Help him to help you. He wants to fill you with himself. It's okay and it's good for me to pray with you. But it's also good for you to make adjustments. If you go to the doctor, he will tell you, open your mouth. He will tell you, sit like this so that I can give you an injection. He will write a piece of paper, a, prescri a prescription, and tell you, go and buy this medicine and take one, three times a day. Please, God wants to work with, that, with us. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, the glory, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.